Welcome friends, we'll just give it a minute or two so everybody can join us. With me today is Meredith and I'm Michelle. Hi. We already have some hands raised. So if you have a question, use the Q&A chat, please. Um, you are on mute and we cannot see you. So if you have any questions, just use the chat or the Q&A. And we've got some more friends joining us. Yay. So also while we wait, if you don't have water or a spoon, you might wanna run and go grab a little bit of water and a spoon, and that will be helpful during our crafting today. Okay, well, I think we can probably get started. Great. Okay, so today what I will be presenting and showing you um, how to craft is the mini garden unicorn. And this is one of three of the mini garden series that we have. So we also have a mini garden mermaid and we have a mini garden dinosaur. So today we are focusing on the mini garden unicorn. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the box and see what's inside. So if you don't mind, Lindsay, we'll switch camera views. And here we go. So this we'll get to later, but we'll move it out of the side, off to the side for a second and open up our box. And friends, you can find this at Michael's. If you don't have it right now uh, to follow along, you can watch this and then the video will be recorded. So you can watch it again when you have the craft kit in front of you. Oh yeah. So far what I've taken out, we have our bag of soil and it's double bag just in case. So you'll see this nicely nice puppy bag of soil. We have our cute little unicorn and our little rainbow. And we also have this adorable little water dropper. You can see it's like the tiniest, cutest little thing ever. So we'll take those out. Get out. There we go. And we have our very special little chia seeds and so like michelle was saying if you do not have this kit you can use chia seeds or you can use wheatgrass seeds um chia seeds and wheatgrass seeds they grow relatively quickly so that's why we recommend those and like i said if you don't have this kit you can find any kind of potting soil at your local gardening center or right now it's pretty seasonal, so it might be able to be found in other stores as well. And we have our sand, which is also double bag, just in case. This beautiful lime green, this beautiful cobalt blue. Ooh, neon pink, which I think is my favorite. I think that's my favorite too. <laughs> and purple. Oh, no, I'm sorry, purple it is. <laughs> <laughs> it matches my nails. And then we have these little white rocks. And our stickers. And I know there's something else in here. Our stickers and our rhinestones. Our rhinestone stickers, stars, flowers and round. So put that aside. And just a reminder, if you have a question, please use the Q&A or the chat function um, instead of raising your hands. And that way we can answer your question. 
And then this is what we'll be growing our garden in. And it's basically like an egg and it fits perfect. The top fits perfectly on the bottom and it's a nice tight fit. And there's a hole in the top just to get some airflow and you can water your garden that way. So if you don't have this kit, we also recommend using any kind of a plastic container, which I did bring one with me. So this would work as well. And um, I won't share what brand that is, but it's a peanut butter jar. And you can just take out off the label and wash it out and ask a parent or a guardian to put holes in the top of it. So then you'll get some airflow as well. So any kind of plastic container with a lid would be helpful as well. All right. Oh yeah, and the instructions, which I love to bring out last. So then we can actually read through it and start. So do we have any questions so far? Are we good? Should we start? Yeah, let's, let's start. Okay. So before you begin, cover your work area and have a cup of water and a, sp a spoon nearby. The sand and potting mix can be messy, so avoid getting it near your face or eyes. In case of contact, rinse with water. Oh, this is important. Select which side of your terrarium base and lid will be the front. This will help you plan the arrangement of your stickers, seeds, and accessories. Okay, so before planting, decorate the outside of the terrarium base with the rhinestones. Well, let's do that. Get all this stuff out of the way. Okay, so like the instructions said, we wanna be mindful of what is the front and what is the back of our terrarium. So since this is facing me right now, this will be the front and I'm gonna mark the front with a light pink flower. So these stick on really easy and they're super cute. So and friends, if you have the dinosaur or the mermaid in front of you, you can absolutely follow along with us. Right, and I know that those two little terrariums have different styles of stickers that speak to those themes. So for the mermaid, you'll be putting on very pearly and fish scale stickers. And for the dinosaur, there's a ton of different little um, dinosaur footprints that you can use. So. So when you're putting them on, you can actually try and create a little pattern. Um, so I have clear, light pink, dark pink. So I'll just create that pattern all the way around. So clear, light pink, and dark pink. And you know what this egg reminds me of? What's that? A certain holiday that's coming up very soon. <laughs> yes, I think that re it reminds me of that as well. And it would be perfect as a little gift or a little springtime intro before it gets warm enough out to grow things outside, you can start growing things inside. So as I mentioned earlier, this chia seed, it grows very quickly. So the one, the garden that I grew, I started my chia seeds last Friday. And by today, they're already, I would say some of them are even an inch tall. So they grow really quick. There you go. Oop. Now put a couple more on. So I put stars on the bottom row 
and flowers on the top row. But you can do whatever you want. And if you have your own stickers, you can use those too. So it's all up to you. Okay, so we're back to the front. Now I'm going to leave the rest of the stickers on here just in case I want to add more later. But I'll just put those to the side and we'll move on to step two. Okay, so open your potting mix and add a few tablespoons of water. Squish the bag until the mix clumps together like clay. Add more water as needed. Okay, so here's our potting mix. And I'm going to use scissors to open it up. And right now it feels really light and kind of fluffy. It doesn't have much weight to it at all. So bring my water over here. And here's, some, here's my spoon. So I'm just gonna spoon the water in, actually. It'd be easier if I tilt my water. Oop. Let's see. I go like, oop, okay. I think it might take a little while. Actually, maybe I'll just pour it in. That might work better. There we go. I'm just pouring it in. And now I'm gonna work it around. Wow, I can always already feel a difference. So. What does it feel like? Well, now it feels like, kind of like if you can imagine adding water to um, a dry jello mix, and then that kind of like gets kind of sticky. That's how it feels. Not that it's sticky, but it has that kind of weight to it now. So, or there's that clay that um, kind of sticks together. It's kind of like sand. So it feels kind of, it feels more like that than the jello. And in the instructions, it says you can add more water if you need to. So I think I might need to just a little bit more. Towards the bottom. Oh yeah, that's great. So I'm pretty sure this is the consistency we need. So it's all sticking together. And I believe our next step, let's see, press the mix into the bottom of your terrarium. Okay, so we have to open up our terrarium and we're gonna, I'm gonna spoon it in so I don't get my fingers too dirty yet. Here we go. And in you go. I'm pressing it down with the spoon. Oh yeah, this is a perfect consistency. So here we go. And I love this because like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's cold, like it's still kind of cold out over here where we live but we're still being able to start a garden because it's indoor. And I love gardens and I love growing things. So this is super fun. There we go, pressing it in. And I believe it will take most of the mix to fill it all in. And I'm gonna fill it not to the very tippy top, but mostly to the top. Pushing it down at the back of my spoon, making it somewhat even as much as I can. Here we go. Cool. Okay. And we'll put that aside. And there's a couple little pieces here. 
there. Okay, step three, what's next? Okay, press the mix and sprinkle a few white stones across the back of your terrarium. Okay, we'll find where the back of the terrarium is. Let's see, I think where I started, here it is, here's the front, here's the front. So the back will be over here. So let's get my white stones. There we go. And it just opens up with your fingers. You don't even need scissors. It's just like tore open, which is nice. And it says to sprinkle those over along the back. So, ta -da. Meredith, what if you don't have stones and you're just doing um, this with your own jar? Um, Do you I need them? I think you can use sand as well if you have sand. Um, but Mary might be able to answer that better. So I think that the stones kind of help spread out the chia seed a little bit. And it's a very nice little decorative element. So that's how it looks. Oops, there we go. That's how it looks. And next, now sprinkle a few chia seeds over and between the stones, save the rest to plant later. Okay, so our chia seeds are right here. And I think I can just tear it open. Oh, maybe I'll use my scissors. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Okay, that works. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my spoon and use my spoon to kind of sprinkle them in. So I have a paper towel here. Just and wipe off. Meredith, uh, Mary did answer that. Uh, if you don't have the stones or sand, that's okay. It's really just for decoration and extra color. Oh, good. I was hoping that was the case. All right, so I'm gonna pour some chia seeds into the spoon and then I'll sprinkle those into the garden. There we go. Okay, this is how many I have on my spoon. And we'll just kind of tap it and it disperses the seeds right over the white stones. Cool. So I still have this many left. So there's a still a good amount, which makes me think maybe I should put more in there. Um, but it does say that you can save some to plant later, so. There we go. So this is how many I have left. Okay, I'll put those aside. Now use the dropper to add water to the seeds. Oh my God, this is such a cute little dropper. Where are you? Here you are. You're so cute. Okay, so we're gonna get our water and just squirt it over top of the seeds. Now, since we did add water to the soil, it's made a nice little moist bed for the chia seeds already. So we're just adding more water on top just to kind of activate them from the top inside their nice little soil bed. So here we go. And how much water you need to add daily just depends on how dry or hot your air is. So you don't want to make them too, too wet. Um, but you'll notice once these chia seeds start to grow, they'll look a little bit shiny. 
almost like there's a, a bit of a gel over them. And that's a good sign. So that doesn't mean that you've overwatered them. That means that it's working. So, okay. Yeah, they, they also expand too, which is why you don't want to use all at the same time, right? We saved, saved some for later, right? Right, yeah. So I, I think I use less than half. There's still okay. a whole bunch more. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so now we decorate the inside back and front of the terrarium top with our stickers. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna put the top on the base to remind myself um, where the front and where the back is. So this is the front, this is the back, back here. So we'll slide him over, put this like this, and you can see all of the different stickers we get to choose from. And immediately my eye goes to the castle. So I'm gonna add the castle first. And it says to add it to the inside of your inside of the top. So we've got the inside here. There we go. See if you can see that. And from the outside, it looks like this. So the details are more on the inside than on the outside. And then we've got these beautiful, these little flowers look like bells. They remind me of Lily of the Valley, but they're pink. Very cute. So I'm going to put those kind of on the side. There we go. And they, they stick in really nice and easy. They're very flexible stickers. So it works very very easy, very nice. And that's what this looks like on the outside. And from the inside, it's like that. And then on the front, I think I'd like to have some flowers, purple flowers. And the pink flowers. Oh, and I need the sunshine in there. The sunshine will be above the castle to give it a little bit of color up there. Whee! Happy little sunshine. So cute. I know these stickers are adorable. And we have a little bumblebee. Now I'm going to put the bumblebee on the outside. And I'll put them over here. Cute. And of course, our happy little unicorn that looks like it's skipping. Hey, we'll put you. Hmm put you on the side. There we go. So it looks like our unicorn is galloping away from our castle. And there's a couple more stickers. I'll just get a little sparkle by the castle. Okay, let's see what's next. Add the decorative sand and stones to the top of the soil. Save the leftover sand and stones to replant your garden as needed. Okay. So now it's time to play with color. So we have this really bright green. Oh, I wanna make mine look like a rainbow. So that's what I did for this one. I tried to make it look like a rainbow so I'm gonna to try to do that again, but using all of the colors of the sand, not just the three colors. So we'll go with green first. Okay. 
And these are easy to open up with your fingers as well. So as long as you don't do it too quickly and make the sand go, go all over the place, it works really easy to just open it slowly. All right, so I'm gonna spin my garden around just so I can try and pour my sand in a rainbow formation. Well, it kind of comes out fast, so you have to be very careful. And the rainbow shape might be a little difficult. So if you wanted to just make stripes, that works too. So there's the green. Wow, that's so bright. Cool. And we give you little Ziploc bags to keep your sand in. So you can fold up your sand bag, put it into the Ziploc baggie. And now you don't have to worry about it spilling all over the place. You can keep it nicely in here for the next time you want to replant your garden. Okay, we'll do the purple next. That one up. Now I forgot, did you say the purple was your favorite or the pink was your favorite, Michelle? I actually said the pink was my favorite, but then when you pulled out the purple, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. The purple is really striking up against this green too. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. So Michelle, would you say you have a green thumb? I would say I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like I do like the chia seeds because they grow really fast. And for me, I'd like to see something that I spend time on um, start to grow. Yeah. It definitely gives you that immediate satisfaction. So since it grows within a couple of days, it's it's very fun to watch the process. And actually, what I think I'll do, and tell me what you think about this idea. Maybe I can take a picture of this garden after we finish doing it. And then I can um, take pictures of it as it continues to grow. And then maybe I can put those up on the Facebook page. What yes, do you think? that sounds great. Okay, cool. So then we'll have the whole little like process of it growing. I think that would be fun. And friends, just a reminder, you're gonna wanna keep your seeds watered and they're go going to grow if you accidentally put sand over the seeds. It's okay. Yeah, these are hardy little chia seeds. So this is our rainbow so far. So I just have the pink to add last. Last but not least. Okay. And right in the center. Oh, cute. <laughs> Ta-da! on. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So I'll put this away and then we'll see what we do next. Oh, okay. So all we do next is arrange our unicorn and the rainbow near the front of your garden and then put the lid on and then place your garden in a safe space. So I'm going to put, so we said that the chia seeds and the white rocks were in the back. And I actually um, spun it around in order to make the rainbow a little bit easier for me. So now we can put our little unicorn and rainbow. We can put those in. And before 
I put the lid on, how about if we get a front facing view of the camera so you can see what it looks like from the front. Here we go. Can you guys see that okay? Can you tilt it a little bit so we can see the sand? Yeah. Oops. Oops. I don't know if I can actually. Let's see. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry we have more sand <laughs> okay we'll just put that back and i'll kind of shoosh the sand back where it's supposed to go okay so normally we wouldn't be um we wouldn't be holding our garden like that so you get the idea and then i'm gonna go ahead and put our top on and show you what it looks like with the top on with our stickers and how about that front facing view again Ta -da! Cute. wow so do, when should you water it again so let's see if it says for best results do not place your terrarium in direct sunlight um Let's see what else. If your garden is too wet, you may notice fuzzy stuff growing on it. That's not it. Well, I can tell you how I watered mine. So on Friday, last Friday, I started the seeds. Oh, and you can do a top down again. And I'll point out my little seeds here or my little chia that's growing. So last Friday, I added the little chia seeds all on the top of the rocks just like what we did today and then Saturday I didn't see anything growing so I moved it to a window where it was a little brighter but it wasn't super sunny um, and I didn't water it on Saturday but then on Sunday I did add just a little bit of water probably three squirts from our little water dropper and then I noticed on Sunday night, little Chia started opening up. And then Monday, you could see a couple little sprouts. And Tuesday, you could see more little sprouts. And then on Tuesday, I added a couple more drops. So I would say every other day, I added just a couple squirts like two squirts from our little eyedropper. And then yesterday, I didn't add anything. And today, this is what it looks like. So you can see, you can kind of see, some of these are about one inch tall. Some of them are about a half inch tall. And then some of them are just starting to poke their little heads out of the sand. So I have all different levels of chia. So my recommendation is every other day to water it just with a couple little squirts. All right, so for this one, I can put my little figures back in, my little unicorn and my rainbow. So I'll put the top on. Here we go. And I think the top acts like a little bit of um, a greenhouse. So when it gets nice and warm and it's you water it and the soil is nice and not too, too wet, but you can actually see when it, it gets kind of warm condensation. You'll see some little water pellets on the inside of the top of the egg. And I think that's a good sign. So you can see that it's actually getting warm enough for our little chia seeds to start sprouting and opening up and growing. So don't, don't be shocked if you see some condensation inside. All right. All right, do we have any other questions? I 
don't think so. Thank you so much, Meredith. You're very welcome. Yeah, so I'm so excited to do these other two mini gardens as well. So like I said, we've got our, the one we just did was our unicorn garden. And that was super cute and super fun. And then our mermaid garden actually comes with, so it's super cute. It comes with a mermaid tail and a beautiful pearl looking shell, different colored sand and pearl and fish scale stickers and beads to decorate with. And then the dinosaur one comes with the cool little dinosaur footprints two dinosaur figurines, a bunch of different stick stickers and sand. So all of these are really fun and cute and would be perfect little gifts for springtime or for Easter or whenever. So it's, it's an easy little craft to do and it's so fun to watch it grow. So I highly recommend them. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions? If you have a question, you can use a Q&A button. Okay, I think that's it for now. And we hope to see you on the next Michael's class. Thank you, everyone. It was so nice to craft with you. See you next time. <laughs>